Hi and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be working on something that I should have done probably a year and a half ago. This is a Walker Turner pillar drill which I purchased probably a couple of years ago. It was in the COVID times and the idea back then was to uh, strip it all down, clean it all up and you know replace anything or fix anything that's broken and then get it all back together. And I intended to use this pillar drill for my everyday machining, but I actually bought a tabletop drill instead, which I could put on to one of my workbenches and it was, you know, a smaller footprint and out of the way. So I intended to then put this back together and sell it off, but hadn't quite got round to it. So today is that day. I'm going to get this all cleaned up and put it together, then I'll sell it off so I've got more room in the garage here. These are all the parts for the pillar drill. As I mentioned, I took this apart quite a while ago, a year and a half, two years ago, something like that. And I think I might have to do some Googling on how to put this back together. As you can see, some of the handles here and the quill handle, uh, they've got a little bit of surface rust on them. So they're going to need to be cleaned up as well. I don't have a proper part spark. So I'm going to have to use this container here. I've got um, a bottle and a bit of kerosene. Uh, so that'll be good to get all the grease and grime off the parts. And I just use these brushes um, to get into the little holes and this brush here for the, for the cleaning. Okay, so I've degreased all the bits and pieces here. The next step will be to just give these pieces a uh, clean up with some acetone and a coat of paint. Now, I don't really want to spend too much time on this as I'll be selling the pillar drill once it's all complete. So I'm just going to give them a quick clean up. And then the next step would be to move into these parts here and get them cleaned up, get a little bit of that surface rust off as best as I can and then we'll get into some assembly. I clean off all of the machine surfaces with a file and some sandpaper. This table had quite a bit of surface rust on it. And I also clean up the round areas. And inside the split casting as well, getting all that grease and grime out of there. The items that need to be painted are cleaned down in acetone to get all the grease and grime off. And then they are subsequently spray painted. I'm using machine grey for the colour. Now some of these areas I'm not too worried about masking them off. This bottom piece and the table, I'll come back and take that overspray off with the file and the sandpaper. Here I'm assembling the table onto the clamp for the pillar. I'm cleaning up the clamping handle and I discover that the threads on here are stripped out in the middle. So I build them up with a bit of weld. And I grind that down and come back with the die and cut the thread back in them. And now that all works quite good. The table is put onto the pillar and clamped in place and that's pretty solid. I used masking tape to cover up the badges while I painted the main body. Again, I'm removing all the surface rust from the parts as I go. Uh, I don't show all of this on camera, but just this first one. So a bit of grease on there. This is the clamp for the main head that gets clamped onto the pillar. I'll line up the centerpiece there. 
Now this collar needs to go on first and this stops the main head from going down too low. I actually adjust that collar up a bit higher so the pillar is not sticking out the top like it is there. Next step is to work on the motor plate. These steel rods go into here and they get clamped in. I put a bit of grease on those bars and that slides in nicely. And I found two nice new bolts to put in here to lock this in place. Now I work on the front pulley and this piece is a bearing retainer which gets pressed in or hammered in. This pulley has the bearing set in the top and the bottom and we press that into the bottom retainer and then this is the top retainer that comes down and goes around the outside of the bearing. Now that top retainer is a little loose but you have these two screws here so you can adjust the height to make sure that the pulley is not binding. And then they're tightened up to lock everything in place. This is a slow speed attachment. It's another pulley set that sits in between the motor and the spindle pulley and provides a lot more speed options. These are the adjusting nuts. One goes on and then the other nut goes on when you connect it to the machine. Now this is why the pillar cannot poke through the top of the head here because it will hit the pulley. And there is a locking nut here that screws into a slot on that thread that keeps the pulley level. Now I start working on the quill and the spindle. I've pre-greased these bearings. I pack some grease into the quill and that bearing gets pushed in. And I almost got it in by hand but I needed a few taps with a piece of wood and a hammer. Now for the other end, again pack it with grease. There's a little spacer here that separates the bearings and the bearings pushed onto the shaft. Again I need to tap that on. This is a bearing retainer that screws in. That goes on the outside race. And then you have the centerpiece that goes on the inside race. This here is a really cool feature. It allows you to force the chuck off the taper. So the chuck goes on, you unscrew this piece and it will push the chuck off. Alright, some grease goes on the spline and on the quill locking mechanism. I have to do a bit of lining up here to put the quill in. And then once it's in I can lock it up and that works great. This is the bracket for the height gauge. It's a little bit tight so I have to wedge it with a screwdriver. The height gauge goes on with a single nut. Now I used a new bolt and I put a nylock nut on the back here, so that shouldn't ever come loose. I don't know how the handles were put in the centerpiece here, but I could not get them out. So I had to wire buff this all as one piece. I cleaned everything up and I was going to blue the handles, but the wire buff came up pretty good. So. In the end, all I blued was the washer and the nut. I'm using perma blue there. This stuff is really good. This is in real time and this is how quick it turns black. So it's the washer. And then I go ahead and put the nut in as well. And you know, straight away, almost instant turning black. I get a brush and just give that a swirl around just to make sure I've got all the area covered. I assemble the handle onto the feed shaft, put the key in there and the washer and the nut. And that's all locked into position. And of course the four balls that go on the end of the handles. 
Now the feed shaft is put into the machine and lined up with the quill and that works good. This is the nut that holds the feed shaft and the spring assembly on and someone was doing some sort of shenanigans with this. They cut a slot in the nut, they drilled some holes in the feed shaft and put split pins in there and stuff like that. So I'm turning this down and I'm going to make another nut and use it as a lock nut. Here I'm attaching the spring assembly. I'm using a bit of Loctite for the bolt and the bolt is just screwed through the spring into the feed shaft. The spring's wound inside the spring assembly and pushed on and then of course we've got the big washer and our modified nut and then we have our smaller nut. I'll do some adjustments there. Then I adjust that large nut and then I lock the nuts together with a couple of spanners. I give it a bit of a test and it works really well. I'm very happy with that fix. Now I start working on the motor and I'm just using a wire brush here to clean off the old paint and it comes off pretty easily so I don't think anyone had used any undercoat on here. Now I heat up the pulley because I want to get that off so I can paint behind it. I try to wedge it off but it won't come off and I chicken out. I don't want to break this pulley. I clean the motor down with acetone ready for painting. And then I start masking up all the areas that I don't want any paint on. And of course the pulley needs to be covered up. Now I'll work on the wires. I'll sort of just cover all those up. And I put a bit of tape around the end by where it goes into the motor as well. This is an undercoat. And then of course we put on a top coat. And in this case I only have flat black. It looks nice and shiny there but once it's dry it's quite dull. But that's all I had in the workshop. This is the thumb part. Taking all the coverings off. And the badge there as well. Now I work on fitting the electrical back in. There's the grommet that goes in for the power lead. The second one is a little bit tricky because there's nothing to hold it in so I wrap around a bunch of tape there and that will stop it pulling through the casing of the motor. The motor is bolted onto the drill and the belts are put on and adjusted. I'm using nylocks here so that there's no chance for these bolts to vibrate loose. Now for the on off switch. I found a couple of new bolts that I could use here. The last item to assemble is the chuck. So I'm just giving the taper a good clean off with some acetone and I do the same for the inside of the chuck here as well. I give it a bit of a turn just to make sure it's seating and doesn't feel like there's any dirt in there. Then according to Keith Rucker you just give it one whack with the hammer and that's on nice and tight. Now we test it out. This is 15 millimeter flat bar. Yeah. Okay, I found the problem. That's the operator. Take two. Well, I did take two without starting the camera, so this is going to actually be take three. I 
this is drilling through very, very nicely. I'm happy with that. Well, that is the restore complete, and I have to say for an old drill press, I believe 1930s, it actually runs quite smoothly. So a testament to American made and the quality to last a long time. Now at the top where the pulleys are, there's meant to be, I believe, a plate and a guard that cover the pulleys and the belts. But I did not get those with the drill press, so that's all sort of open at the moment. Maybe that'll be something the new owner can fabricate and fit to the drill press. I'm glad this one is complete, and I'm going to move on to some other projects now. I hope everyone has a great day, and once again, thanks for watching.